pig. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. It's Tim Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks for coming to the channel. Follow the account. Ring the bell for the bang. Follow the person with two tails in the description below. Today we're doing the movie review. It is a Maratha film. I think. Oh, Six. Maratha. Six or seven, probably around there. Probably. Uh, I need to check our playlist. In case you don't know. Uh, I have playlist of every movie we've ever watched in turn and I've narrowed them down to their language uh, So all of the Marathi uh, reviews are in one playlist Canada Tamil Hindi uh, which probably should be broken up into two, but it's not right. Yeah <laughs> um, But just so you know that but yes Fandry uh, the 2013 I believe it says right here on IMDb. Uh, it's a about a teenager from a Oppressed cast. I don't, how do you say that? Dalit? Dalit. Uh, untouchable. Uh, right. Family. Uh, who lives at a village, at the village fringe, mm -hmm. and falls in love with an upper caste girl. Directed by, say his name? Uh, Nagraj Manju. We know him from Sairat. He directed that. This was his directorial debut. He was also in the film. I don't know if you know that. He's that guy. I didn't realize that. that. Yeah, he's that guy. Wow. Uh, the, the, the guy who kept playing the game. And yeah. He was the, another outcast, essentially. Uh, and then I think it's mostly starring a bunch of people who are unknowns, mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, but, yes. Uh, so this will be 100% spoiler review. It's just how we like to do it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back and uh, prepare to be spoiled. Yep. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. <laughs> I liked it. Nice. It feels like a much newer film than it does, an eight-year-old film. It does. It feels like it was made last year. Absolutely. It does. So whatever he made it on, whatever camera, it's held up very well for the... Because we've seen films that were a couple, like, eight, ten years back, and it seemed much older. Right, than, and it feel like a 20-year-old film. Yeah. This one felt like it was right out of the same wheelhouse. It had... There's, there's this grouping of films that have this... Uh, I don't know how to describe it other than... There, you'll know what I say when I put them all together. Um, Parched, Hellerau, this film, I, and I guess the, the common denominator with them would be the village thing. What was the one we saw? Kila. Kila. Uh, Titi. Yeah. These are films that. Village rock stars. Village rock stars that yeah. are centered on village life, and mm -hmm. but they also talk about important issues in extremely subtle ways. Mm -hmm. They don't go Sometimes out of their way. Sometimes they're not so subtle. Yeah, they, that's true. Sometimes they get big. They have their, they have their moments of bigness, but yeah. on the whole... It's a pretty sub it's subtle film. pretty subtle, subdued. Mm -hmm. They And there was pretty much more to like than anything. I would recommend the film. I would watch it again. And I thought there were some messages in there that are messages we've seen before that need to keep getting repeated over and yeah. over again. Yeah, I liked this film a lot. Um... I think it's a very powerful film uh, that, and the, the powerful message that this this guy was trying to convey. Yeah, in a lot of aspects, obviously about caste, but also who's at fault mm -hmm. for that. Right. I thought that there was a lot of subliminal messages. I agree about that that he made in this film, and then also the ending, which was uh, it's, it's a very hard to watch film because like. It's heartbreaking. It gets you mad. It gets you mad. It's it's heartbreaking the way they're treated, the way they treat themselves, the way they treat other people. Uh, and so it's 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 one of those films that's just so well done. It's a very important film, I think, for like everybody should see this film. And I could see why it was highly recommended to us for a long time. Yeah. This one was high on the list, especially for Marathi, for a long, long, long time. Uh, and this one, I feel, even though Cider Up in terms of an overall film I like more. It's just a more enjoyable film. Right. This one is probably more powerful. I agree. Uh, and, and also the, the message it's trying to send is, I think, more important. Uh, even though that one was a, a, a deep message as well, and you know how I loved how that film ended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna give anything away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, from, uh, we can talk, the main kid. I think he's an unknown. 
Just like when we watched uh, Village Rockstars and that other one that she did as well. Um, yeah, um, doggone it. <sighs> it's uh, Asami's film. Uh, it's from Rima Das. Ugh, I'm sorry, I can't remember. But those kids With the kids and yeah. the boy. Uh, uh, and the mom that I yeah. love so much in the, it. The little gay boy. Uh, he, he's, he does a really good job, especially for being somebody who has, I don't believe, had much work yeah. in the past. So the director, who is also a great character, I thought, in this, uh, in this film, uh, did a good job at getting the performances out of these, these actors. We've seen, I feel like that happens a lot. More than it does the here. The directorial debuts. Have, have we seen any bad ones? Well, I guess the bad ones they wouldn't recommend to us. I guess so. Yeah. But, I mean, we've, we've seen some ones that have just been shocking how good they are. Absolutely. This does not in any way feel like someone who hasn't directed before. It feels like someone who has very good comfort level at every dimension with... The partnership with the cinematography, the way everything is framed and shot. I thought the score was not only really pretty, mm -hmm. but really powerfully Absolutely. simple. Absolutely. So many times it was utilized. Just the cello? Yes. A lot of times. And then moments where it really, the score, it's a really good example of a score keeping you in touch with the main character's emotional state. Yeah. And when his gets interrupted, the music got interrupted. I thought that was very intelligent composition as well as direction to incorporate that in the in the film. And, it, and many times, I remember there were times I was able to single it out and think, wow, that's really beautiful. And then there were other moments after the fact, I didn't recognize as it was happening the score. I, I just, I realized that after the fact and thought that was brilliant. They took me there emotionally without me even realizing it was the score that was helping me get there. Absolutely. So yeah, I ultimately, I have, Te this is always the case. Teeny tiny little nitpicks of some of the smaller roles yeah. at moments that are like, come on, what are you going to do? Are you going to be yeah. so nitpicky that, no, you're not. Yeah, uh, no. I'm going to recommend the film. There were, there, I had some of those issues too, but nothing that I think took away from no. the film, anything. Um, but my favorite parts are a lot of the messages uh, that it was trying to send. Obviously, this family is from a, a untouchable family, which obviously is an absurd concept in and of itself, especially to a Western. We, un we uh, like, I understand what it is. Oh yeah, we know full we well, know full what, well what the caste system is. Doesn't make it any less stupid. And the whole concept of untouchable isn't just an Indian thing. Yeah. That's gone on in many cultures, particularly you want to read about anything going on Old Testament wise and New Testament too. Yeah. Uh, throughout history, there have always been groups of people that have been relegated to the lower levels of the echelons where they're considered the untouchables yeah. and the outcasts. Absolutely. Uh, and it's it's very, very sad. I also didn't know as well, it reminded me a lot of, um, again, citing Old Testament, New Testament examples. I didn't, I don't recall there being a big shunning of uh, pigs being unclean. Mm. And obviously the parallel metaphor of the actual pig versus the people as the pigs who were the ones that can touch them. Yeah. But it was very obvious, the only ones that should be touching the pigs are the human pigs yeah. because they're as unclean as those people. And then they, if somebody was touched by a pig, you have to clean yourself with cow urine or right, very old something. Testament. Yeah, so so there's all these different superstitions that went into this particular. But then actually, my 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 wife's family's in town now, and they watched this film with me. Mm. This was their first Indian. Film. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, but she, my 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 sister-in-law has two young children. One's about twelve. The other's about nine. So they. <laughs> They had a lot of questions. I bet. Because, <laughs> like, I saw it and I was like, it's PG. I was like, it's probably fine. Right. But the subject matter is about the caste system. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions as to right. what the heck is going why on. Why are they being treated this way? Yeah. Why? Why? why what's darky? When, why can't a pig touch you? Right. Uh, so all this different kind of stuff. But they, they ended up uh, liking the film uh, quite a bit. Uh, they did have a lot of questions. But, yeah, so but this film definitely made you uncomfortable in the right scenarios. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant writing because not only were everyone so terrible to these people, these people have been in their situation for so long. They're terrible to each other. Exactly. And, and, and I was thinking about, as you said that, uh, they're starting to believe what everybody's Exactly. Them. It shows you, I really liked where it went because a lot of directors and writers would have taken the story 
and made it be because this kid, he's wanting to study and his dad's like, why are you studying? You're a pig. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So stop it. You're embarrassing all of us. Mm -hmm. Thinking you're going to go somewhere. And a lot of directors and writers would take that story and make him the hero that breaks free of the cast system. This did not do that. Mm -hmm. This showed you, this is what's gone on generationally, that there's hope, it gets quashed, and then the circumstances that they're in and the way that they're treated, yep. they become part of the system, yeah. even though they don't want to be part of it because that's just what they've been lot, enslaved in. A lot of symbolism about who is at fault. Because obviously not only is it these other people putting them in the situation and set telling they're untouchable. The moment he was about to get the bird in the end, his dad is the one that came in. Yes. And obviously the bird was a metaphor. Right. The Constantly. big metaphor in, in the thing about breaking the free. The sparrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but his dad in the end is the one that kind of got in the way of him actually getting his bird right. in the end. And then also one of the most powerful metaphors, I don't know if you picked up on it, was they almost had to pick. The Indian National Anthem started playing. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> the school started singing the national they sure anthem. Did. Everyone stopped. You're right. And they good, knew. Good observation. They knew if they kept going, people would be so much more offended that they're not standing for the national anthem than letting them do their job because mm -hmm. that's what they wanted. They they consider that a lot more disrespectful than how they treat these people. Right. Great observation. So it's like not only is it obviously these people, it's. Essentially, I'm reading into it. It's India. Mm -hmm. the, the national anthem played for a reason. The director put that there Absolutely. for a of reason. Of course. Uh, and had all of the kids there standing and watching. Yeah, saying, this yes. is not just a group of people. This is an entire society that have perpetuated this for generation and upon I, generation. And I picked up on that aspect of it throughout. Great observation about the national anthem because I myself was so engrossed in what I knew we were hitting the climax. Yeah. And I, I, I was so engrossed in that I missed out on that mm -hmm. observation. But the, as a whole, this, like Jolly Katu, mm -hmm. isn't just about a regional in, uh, area. Yeah. It is a regional thing. Yeah. But it's a much broader, larger, not just even Indian thing. This is a universal thing. Oh, yeah. It's about just any place, treating anywhere. People, certain to, ways. Obviously, America has ways. very yep. bad history bad of treating history. people certain still ways. Still freaking does. Still, still do. Yep. Um, and also, the end. I loved it. I did, too. I, you know, I love those types of endings that leave you with questions. But not only, obviously, did he stand up for himself and his family. But. But. What did he throw it at? He didn't throw it at this guy. He threw it at the audience. Right. It didn't like you. It's it's to assume that obviously he's throwing at the guy, but it went directly at camera. Correct, and that was on purpose. Very much on purpose, <laughs> and it was very much on purpose that that was the final frame that you saw. And what it really did in that moment was again what I love about the reality of the movie versus it becoming something that was uh, the happily ever after. Yeah, I like the fact that on the one hand he is standing up for himself. Mm -hmm. On the other hand. He has just sealed the deal. Yep. He has just literally sealed the deal by, I have fully immersed myself into this system. I am defending myself, but I am separating myself from everybody by being a part of this and throwing this rock. And you know what happened if he hit in this guy. You can okay. just finish up the story here. Yep. He's he's not eradicating himself. He's just solidified it. Yeah. He's like, I'm done. Yeah. Literally, he, he, knows, rock, what's gonna, he knows what's going to happen. The though. rock's is emblematic of the solidification of I am now fully in this yeah. and I wanted to get out of it. And I, yeah, it's very, I very love that he threw it right at the camera. Me too. Because that was a lot of symbolism is, uh, he's like, I'm not, I'm not talking, the director's like, I'm not talking about just these guys. I'm talking about you right now. And yeah, in whatever way that you are perpetuating this system that allows people to be oppressed this way. Right. Uh, just same way, like if, there was a film about a certain type of slavery or racism in America, and they ended up with a similar shot. Right. You know what that would be saying. Right. It's talking to Americans Everybody. about how are you perpetuating this system. Exactly. So, uh, it's assaulting you. Yeah. The point is, are you getting the point? Yeah. And while I was comparing this to uh, all of the other films thematically and feel-wise, because it felt like those films, yeah. the intellectual capacity of the script and the story is far more reminiscent of me of Jolly Katu. Yeah. In terms of so seeing something, definitely had a big we have an animal that's 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 part of the process, and who's the real animal in yeah. this? Like, who's the real pig in this, yeah. and what is a pig? So uh, it, it was a very, I really, really like. He, he did a, a 
big message to get across. And also, I think he's a good actor. He's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> yeah, now that I know he's the, the, the yeah, director. I, I love that. That was the one kid's, like, f person he looked up to, a friend, was another outcast uh, of society. And he's really the only one that came through for me. Brought him the drum uh, at that one point, and he was there to support him. Uh, nobody else was was doing that. Yeah, and, and the other thing we haven't even touched on either is the I love the little love story that also ends with you knowing you didn't get it. They're never going to be together. She never knew. Nope. And she never will because yeah. he's, he's probably dead. Yep. And if, if not that, he's an untouchable who's going to grow up and treat his son the way his dad treated him. It was a beautiful moment when he was in his uh, in his dream and he was living yeah. out that what was he great. wanted to live out. And yeah. They were cuddling. They were they were staying out in the sun. As well as his the other one uh, where he's in the well. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, just a very, very well done film. Very well done, powerful very good message. Film. I would love to see more from him. Uh, I don't, I'm assuming he's done more, because obviously with the success of this, success of Syrup, uh looks like the essay of the rain. And we've got such a great handful of films that we could point to, not just um, big films that people would know. Like, I would always recommend to folks, if you want to see something... Just beautifully epic. You're going to watch Bajir Ramastani or Padmabad. Oh, That's yeah. one of the first ones I'm going to recommend. Mm -hmm. But then for those who are the, the lovers of small cinema and film festival cinema, uh, we have a huge list of s extremely good films. Yeah. And I, I would include this in the list of films that we would recommend. Mar uh, really Marathi is... Uh, I know Malayalam is, is up there in terms of just everything being very artistic and being really high level. Marathi is right there. Right there. In terms of just, like, I mean, if you look at it, so if my play is the correct, this is our sixth Marathi and, film. And they're and all... Every single one of those. Probably the one we liked least was the Not Samrat. Not Samrat, and even that. But the performance was good. It's just the film overall didn't strike us as well it? as the others did. Right. Uh, but we got but Sairat. Sairat. Yeah. The Factory one, which I loved so much. Mm -hmm. Court, that mm -hmm. we both thought was great. Kila. Kila. And then this one. And this one. This is a great yeah. hit list for the Marathi films. And it's I know it's a smaller industry. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm, I think it's like, since obviously it's in the same state as, as Mumbai is, and so Bollywood, I think a lot of the independent ones get Marathi. Yeah, uh, probably. And so the very artsy yeah, genre, uh, I suppose. I don't know. You guys can let me know. But it was fantastic. I love this film. So let us know what the next Marathi film we should watch uh, down below. <laughs>